Disaster struck on the set of the Western movie Rust. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're examining our picks for the 10 movies that actually got people killed. They're all dead. They just don't know it yet. For this list, we'll be looking at the terrible events on film sets that led to members of the cast and crew perishing. Which on set accidents shocked you the most? Let us know below. Sarah Jones, Midnight Rider. What was meant to be a biographical film about musician Greg Allman instead turned into a disaster on the first day of shooting Midnight Rider. In February 2014, as the crew was crossing a railway bridge in Georgia, a freight train approached. They rushed to get the equipment out of the way. However, a prop hospital bed remained. Once the train hit it, the bed struck camera operator Sarah Jones, knocking her into the freight's path. Sarah was the first person I saw. She was lying on the side of the tracks. Several others were also hurt by the incident. Director Randall Miller and executive producer Jay Sedrish pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter. Miller spent a year in prison and is serving nine years of probation. Sedrish got 10 years of probation. Midnight Rider was canceled because of this terrible tragedy. It was rough. I mean, I, I, it took the wind out of me. It's very, very, very hard. Roy Kinnear, The Return of the Musketeers. Roy Kinnear was one of England's beloved character actors, with roles in 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and many others. He reprised his role of Planchette for 1989's The Return of the Musketeers. It's an ambush. Yeah, it's an ambush. For one scene, Kinnear and others were meant to cross a bridge in Toledo, Spain on horseback. However, stones were wet. Kinnear's horse slipped, throwing its rider to the ground, where the actor broke his pelvis. Kinnear was rushed to Madrid for surgery. It's you. <laughs> Small world. However, he passed away from a heart attack the following day. In 1994, Kinnear's family was awarded 650,000 pounds and court costs against production company Falcon Films. The film's director, Richard Lester, who worked with Kinnear several times, never made another narrative movie. Where the devil have you been anyway? Huh? Ten years ago, I sent you out to buy cheese, you never came back. Well, Art Scholl, Top Gun. Since 1986's Top Gun heavily featured planes and flying, the team needed experienced pilots to showcase their skills. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! And they selected well with Art Scholl, who had years of flight and filming experience as a stunt pilot. He even operated his own flight school, Art Scholl Aviation. However, as he performed an upside down spin in his plane for Top Gun, something went very wrong. You were in a 4G inverted dive with a MiG-28? Yes, ma'am. Scholl was unable to stabilize the aircraft, and it plunged into the Pacific Ocean, just five miles from the Californian coast. His plane and body were never recovered. Only some debris from the aircraft was located. As such, we may never know what exactly caused such an experienced pilot to lose his life. Ghost is dead. I know. Fly jets long enough, something like this happens. David Ritchie, Jumper. After years of laboring in Hollywood, David Ritchie was a set dresser for the film Jumper as they shot in Toronto, Canada. And then I jumped back for the final quarter of the NBA Finals, courtside of course, and all that was before lunch. I could go on, but all I'm saying is I'm standing on top of the world. He and his team were putting away a scene with four workers above focusing on lumber. However, their movements mixed with the vibrations of nearby equipment caused frozen slabs of sand and gravel to fall. Unfortunately, the debris landed on Richie and another crew member. Oh, crap, I, uh, I didn't expect that. While one survived with serious injuries, Richie did not. No one was wearing safety equipment at the time of the incident. In 2008, the film company Jumper Productions was fined $250,000 for multiple infringements of the Occupational Health and Safety Act. There are always consequences. Joy Harris, 
Deadpool 2. Action films always come with a degree of risk for those filming, but more so when proper measures aren't taken. We have mission. Well, you guys be safe out there. I'll be praying for you. In August 2017, Joy Harris had her first role as a stunt performer in Deadpool 2 after being the first African-American woman licensed motorcycle road racer. In place of Zazie Beetz's Domino, Harris was meant to ride down a ramp on a motorbike. However, not properly prepared by the team, she lost control, hit a curb, and went through a glass pane. After lost control, went across the street over a curb and through a glass pane window into a building across the street. Harris sadly didn't survive. In 2019, Fox settled out of court with Harris's family for an undisclosed amount. In 2020, TCF Vancouver Productions was fined $289,562 for its unsafe working conditions. We're heartbroken, shocked, and devastated, but recognize nothing can come close to the grief and inexplicable pain her family and loved ones must feel in this moment. Helena Hutchins, Rust. In October 2021, Alec Baldwin was rehearsing a scene for Rust. During it, he took out a prop firearm and shot it. Instead of firing blanks, a live round was released. We still don't know how live ammunition got on that movie set. The criminal investigation here is not complete. It struck director Joel Souza's shoulder and cinematographer Helena Hutchins in the chest. While Souza survived, Hutchins did not. Blame immediately fell on armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed for allowing live ammunition on set, not checking the prop and not giving Baldwin proper training. That's the one. Okay, sorry. You're I'm okay. Sorry. Just relax. Just relax. I'm so scared. I'm sorry. You're all right. Just relax. <laughs> so here's the box that I got them out of. As well as first assistant director David Halls, who gave the actor the weapon. In 2002, Rust Movie Productions was fined $137,000 for breaking safety regulations. In February 2023, Baldwin, on top of facing several lawsuits, pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter. Gutierrez Reed is facing a similar charge. I do check the dummies. I shook all of them, and they all they all showed that they were not hot, I guess you could say. John Jordan, Catch-22. Second unit director John Jordan already had a bit of a reputation for being a daredevil when filming a movie. Can you ground somebody who's crazy? Of course, I have to. There's a rule that says I have to. Anyone who's crazy. I'm crazy! When he was involved in 1967's You Only Live Twice, he hung out of a helicopter with a harness. However, his foot struck the aircraft's blades, nearly removing it there and then. Eventually, Jordan's foot had to be amputated, and he was fitted with a prosthetic. In May 1969, Jordan was shooting Catch-22. Well, I've had to put down the Mediterranean ones, uh, once in the Adriatic. Then I crash-landed one plane and I bailed out once. You're very lucky. As he recorded aerial footage from a plane, a strong gust of wind from a nearby jet caused Jordan to get too close to the open door. Since he wasn't wearing a harness, he was sucked out into the sky, falling fatally into the sea below. Doc, I don't want to fly anymore. Why? It's dangerous. Conway Wycliffe, The Dark Knight. Having worked on 2005's Batman Begins, special effects technician Conway Wycliffe was involved in the sequel, The Dark Knight. If it's so simple, why haven't you done it already? If you're good at something, never do it for free. In September 2007, he was in a 4x4 as they rehearsed a driving scene in Surrey, England, involving the Batmobile. As Wycliffe leaned out the window to record without a seatbelt, the vehicle didn't turn in time and crashed into a tree. The New Zealand national suffered severe head injuries and passed away. The world is cruel. The only morality in a cruel world is chance. In November 2008, the tragic incident was deemed an accident at an inquest. Chris Carbold, who was the special effects supervisor for the Batman film, was found not guilty of breaking health and safety rules in 2011. We must remember that vigilance is the price of safety. Brandon Lee. The Crow. Having already recorded most of his scenes for The Crow, Brandon Lee had to film the moment near the beginning when his character Eric Draven is shot by Funboy as he enters his home. Eric. 
However, the prop gun used by Michael Massey wasn't checked properly. Instead of firing just a blank, it released remnants of a dummy bullet, fatally striking Lee's abdomen. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. Afterward, his mother, Linda Lee Cadwell, issued a lawsuit against the filmmakers, which was later settled for an undisclosed amount. After a police investigation, Lee's slaying was deemed an accident, with no criminal charges issued against Massey or the filmmakers. Do you think that that overwork, that exhaustion might have resulted in this accident? Safety precautions, uh, all of them were definitely not followed. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Vic Morrow, Renee Shin Yi Chen, and Mika Din Lei. Twilight Zone, the movie. Looking to pay tribute to the iconic TV series, The Twilight Zone, filmmakers set to create Twilight Zone, the movie. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. In one segment, Bill Connor, played by Vic Morrow, was sent through time to experience what it's like to be oppressed due to race. At one point, he ends up in the Vietnam War, being attacked by Americans. Connor's out there, man, I know it. Be cool, man, don't get your nuts in a bunch. He's right, man, something's moving. Filming in July 1982, Morrow was meant to pick up young actors Rene Shin Yi Chen and Mika Din Lei while running away from a helicopter. Instead, the aircraft lost control after a special effect exploded too close to it. It then landed on top of the three actors. In 1987, several filmmakers, including director John Landis, were acquitted of involuntary manslaughter. And then, as the crew watched in horror early this morning, the make-believe dissolved and actor Vic Morrow and two Vietnamese children were killed. 